Yes, the other three were okay. So, when they were here, we were working. But we started noticing challenges about maintaining that duty roster. Because you know, I see you with your patients here, and one of you is not there, and the other one is doing 10 times different from the other ones. On follow up, we realized, and you know, this after some time, we realized they are never resigned. Actually, they are never resigned from the, from, from a Avenue and Agaka. So when we asked them to choose, they chose. So bringing a patient here without a critical care nurse, even if we even if we got nurses, the normal nurses, the nursing council would, would even sue you. How many do you need for this yet? Now it's now depends on the patient because we have five or ten beds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're all occupied it's at least two nurses mm -hmm. per shift. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. Two nurses per shift. But because we are starting we can say we have a we can use five beds mm -hmm. and say one nurse per shift. Mm -hmm. So that is that is three nurses, uh, I mean 15 nurses. That will suffice. Mm -hmm. But even if you had those four, or even five, mm -hmm. at least we would say a patient can be admitted here and we say, our ICU, despite the fact that we have 10, mm -hmm. our ICU is two beds. Mm -hmm. When the two beds are occupied, then we can say the others can be taken also as we wait for the other staffing. But uh, without any, mm -hmm. it is it, it would be Actually, even ethically responsible to have a patient being managed here by ICU. Mm -hmm. We have an anesthesiologist, you saw, so that is one critical staff who is here. We have uh, uh, two, uh, no, actually, now we have one emergency medicine doctor. We have Dr. Boa and his team. We have the physicians. And now the people to do the. We don't have. That is the only reason why this unit is here. Well equipped, actually, but not functional.